Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip video. In this quick tip video, I'm going to go over what PowerShell splatting is. So really what PowerShell splatting is, is a way to pass parameters to commands or commandlets in PowerShell, basically making commands shorter and easier to read. Now you do do something a little bit differently with splatting. We're going to be using the at symbol instead of the dollar sign to reference a variable that we've created, uh, which might be a little bit different um, for a lot of us since we might not use splatting. But you will definitely see, I'll show a couple examples today. Some of the examples you'll wonder, it doesn't really make it shorter. It kind of makes it a little bit more convoluted. And then the last example that I'm going to show you guys with Active Directory and splatting that is where splatting and its utilities really, really show off is when you have a lot of different parameters that you have to pass. That is when you definitely see the benefits. But let's actually go ahead and let's get started here. So let me just um, remove this sidebar. We're going to need that sidebar a little bit later for an example. And let's shrink this and let's just go ahead and let's make this a little bit bigger for you guys so you guys can see what I'm typing. So let's start off with a first like really, really basic example here. Um, so we're going to do a get service. Now, of course, we know with get service, we usually pass in the name of the service. We're going to pass in here spooler and we get back our spooler service. Um, in our case, it is running. So everything there is fine. Now, if I told you that we can actually do this, which is create a variable called service, and we then need to, we need to make this equal to a hash table. In our hash table, we're gonna create a name property here, and we are gonna make it equal to two quotes here, and we're gonna put spooler. And then what we can actually do, just shrink this a little bit, is we can do the get service at service. So this is going to reference our service hash table. It's going to splat. So actually, what we could do is let me just go ahead and create this hash table here. And let's go ahead and let's just see what the at service gives us. And let's just make this console a little bit bigger. We're going to see that the we get an error message saying the splatter, the splatting operator at cannot be used to reference variables in an expression. At can be used only as an argument to a command to reference variables in an expression. Use the dollar sign service. So now if we actually run that entire command here with our splat, we can actually see that we do get our service back. Now, what the key main things is to keep in mind that in your hash table, these are going to be what the parameter is. So if I misspell name here and I go ahead and I run this, we're going to see that it does still work because it's able to figure out that the NAM is name. But if I really, really mess this up and I put test here and we go ahead and we run that and then we go ahead and we run line seven again, we're going to see that we get an error message saying a parameter cannot be found that matches the parameter name test. And the same thing is if you put in the start of a parameter, which we will actually see, I can show you guys with another example, especially in the active directory, because there's a lot more properties is if it's ambiguous, it will throw you an error as well. So you do have to make sure that you know what your parameters are. Typically, if you have a really long command with a bunch of parameters, you'll already know what your parameters are. And it makes it really easy to actually create these hash tables. So let's go ahead. And let's see a slightly different example that might be a little bit more useful to everyone. So what we actually have here is on the sidebar here, we can actually see that we have two folders here. We have a test folder and a test two, and then we have a test.txt file here. Now, what I want to do is I want to copy this file over to this folder here, the other folder, which is test two. Now, we already know that there is a very, very good commandlet for that called copy item. 
Now, what I could do is I could do copy item here. And I could do uh, path and put in the path here, which for me is going to be, uh, let me just grab that here. I like to just go ahead and we are going to copy path here. And let me just put that in some double quotes for us. And then we also need a destination, which that we just paste in the same thing and change the folder name here to test two. So I can write this out. Now, as you can see, I need to scroll side to side, especially in our case right now, because I'm really zoomed in and trying to make a YouTube video, it becomes a little bit harder to read. But if I run it, of course, it works fine. It copies the file. So let's go ahead. Let's just delete this file. Uh, this way we can actually redo the test in just a few seconds here. What we can actually do is we can create, um, let's create a hash table called copy info. We're gonna make that equal to a hash table. Now, all I would typically do is take my parameters that I have from copy items. I'm just gonna cut those out and I'm gonna paste them in the hash table. I'm just going to hit enter here on the destination. And we're just going to take out the two little uh, dashes here in front of the parameter names and then just add an equal between the string and the parameter name. And now all we need to do is at the at symbol copy info to splat out the copy info. And we go ahead and we run this and it copies the file over exactly as if we ran it with that entire parameter chain. Now we do still have to move over because the text is, the file path is quite long, but we can very easily read path and destination. We can kind of easily see what's going on here. So now our last example, which I think in my opinion is probably one of the best use cases for splatting. Now there are a lot of other really, really good use cases for splatting, especially if you're manipulating Azure um, if you're making, um, you're using the graph API or the graph module, anything like that, Hyper-V, um, any type of commands that really have a large set of parameters, this is where splatting becomes very, very useful. So let's go ahead and let's create a new AD user. So we have a new AD user here. We're going to do names. And we are going to do the name here. We're going to make it a YouTube test one. And we're going to do the Sam account name. And we're going to make that um, YT test one. We want to make sure that the account is enabled. We want the account password. Now, a trick for the account password that I really like to do here is if you want to just make it very, very simple for your scripts, is you're just going to put a set of parentheses here, and we're going to do a convert to secure string. And then we're going to say as plain text. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in our test password in here. So I'm just going to put it... Um, YouTube test one, two, three, four, exclamation mark. And we're going to do a force on that. And then the last parameter that we need is just server. And we're going to make that jack.ca. So if we go ahead and we run this, of course, no errors. Everything is working great. If I go into my users in Active Directory, we can see the account is there. Now, once again, we encounter the same problem though. This becomes a very, very long thing that we have to scroll back and forth for. So what we can actually do is let's just go over to a new line here and let's create a new user and we're gonna create that as a hash table. Now, as you probably already guessed it, we're just gonna copy this info because we're just gonna create a whole new user. 
all we need to do is copy all these parameters in here. Make sure that all the parameters, each of them, are in a new line. And then we're just going to remove the dashes. And then all we need to do is just add equal signs here. And then I just like to remove the spaces. You can either add a space on either side or remove the spaces. As long as whatever you pick, you kind of stay consistent. That's what I would usually recommend. Um, and then I like to just add uh, quotes around the server name in these cases, just to make it look like it is an actual string. You can easily modify it. And then if we did a new AD user here, and then we can splat new user. And let me just change that to two and two. And let's create a actual problem here. So we're just going to change this from account password to password. And you're going to see the issue that we actually get. So if we actually go ahead and we run this, this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier here. We're going to have parameter cannot be processed because the parameter name password is ambiguous. Possible matches include password never expires and password not required. Now, of course, that's not any of them that we have. So that would tell me that we need to go look at the parameter set and then we'll find out that it is account password. But that is just something to keep in mind. If you do miss type a parameter, it's not necessarily the end of the world when you're using splatting as long as there's not multiple parameter names that are have that same beginning that you spelled correctly. Um, so if you did nam instead of name, as long as there's not name, name, preferred or name legal, um, then that would be fine. Um, so those are just different things that you do have to keep in mind. But let's go ahead and let's run this little bit of code here. And we are easily able to create this new user. Let's go ahead and let's refresh our Active Directory here. And there is our YouTube test too. So this is very, very good. Now, of course, we can go even crazier here. We're just going to make one more little last example, we can go given name. Um, you can make that test surname. We can make that YouTube here. So as you can see, like the more and more parameters that you're going to get, it doesn't get any harder to read. It becomes very, very easy. That is where the splatting very comes in handy is the more parameters splatting becomes a whole lot of a of a beneficial thing to use. If you're just using it for get service, I can definitely understand not necessarily really wanting to use splatting, but if you're creating Azure VMs, anything in Azure, a new app, a new app registration, a new Active Directory user, a new VM in Hyper-V or anything like that, splatting will definitely save you a lot of issues further down the line when you're going back to read your code as well because it will be a whole lot easier to read and it just keeps it a lot cleaner so if we go ahead and we'll just create this this user here so let's just change these to three and it's created we can easily tell as well if we refresh here we have three and then we have our given name and our surname there so that is really the key to splatting. It will really save you a lot of time and make your code just a lot more readable where you won't have to scroll horizontally as much, which is kind of nice, especially if you have commands that have 10 plus parameters. It gets really, really tricky and you kind of get lost in it, I find, especially for myself. Um, if you guys have any commandlets or anything that you guys would like me to perform or take a look at and make a video on for PowerShell quick tips, please let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have a tip that you guys use all the time in PowerShell or anything else and you guys want to let the community know, just let me know in the comment section down below. Or if it's a commandlet that you guys find really useful, if it's part of a special module, just let me know what module as well and I could definitely make a video on it. Or if maybe there's a commandlet you don't quite understand and you want to know more about it, let me know as well and hopefully i can clarify that up for you and if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button hit that like button and also be sure to hit that notification bell 
to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.